This is a block of beans. And it's supposed to taste like meat because it's covered in mold. Fevers, headaches, facial swelling, pooping blood, coughing blood. Rhizopus is a mold that it can infect any part of your body if it tries hard enough. And so one country figured out how to eat it without, you know, dying. If you had a cheap source of protein that you can make a lot of very easily, but just happen to have a little bit of mold on it, would you eat it? Because this idea actually helped develop an entire country, Indonesia. This puck of white fuzz is called tempeh. The mold makes the dish. Tempeh is usually made with a mold called Rhizopus oligosporus. Kind of sounds like a dinosaur name, actually. It also sometimes uses Rhizopus orze or mucor species. But over generations, the mold got domesticated and cultivated, so it doesn't actually have those toxins that can get you sick anymore. Mold transforms the soybeans into something completely different. They break down proteins into amino acids, which makes things taste like umami. The glutamates which is also present in things like meats and MSG. And it's not just the flavor, mold's supposed to change the texture too. And some strands of rhizopus can even produce antibiotics. Sometimes tempeh is even eaten to treat things like dysentery. And of course, we're gonna get a little crazy today. We're not just gonna use the traditional mold to make tempeh. We're gonna use a mold that makes alcohol. <laughs> So yeah, different kind of mold. We're gonna use Aspergillus orze, also known as koji. But we're still gonna make both, of course. But this same mold makes sake, miso, and soy sauce. Yeah, it makes a lot of good food. I really wanted to know how different can mold taste from each other. Maybe it's like different kinds of mushrooms, different kind of vegetables, I don't know, different type of meats. We're here to find that out. But well, we're gonna veer from hundreds of years of tradition and food safety to make something of our own that will marginally taste different and maybe even worse. We need to split these soybeans in half because the outside of the soybean is a little bit too hard for the mold to grow on. And I'm using this technique that I learned from Bon Appetit. This is gonna be boiled for about 45 minutes until the beans get kind of soft. We don't want it too soft because we still want it to hold its shape when the mold grows on it. Afterwards, we gotta cool it down from the boil, otherwise the mold is gonna die because it'll be too hot. Soybeans have dried out. We're gonna add the soybeans with a little bit of mold spores. A lot of bacteria in molds can't tolerate an acidic environment. So adding vinegar prevents a lot of those bacteria that are trying to compete with the tempeh from growing, which gives the tempeh kind of a head start. So. So the koji version is gonna be a little bit different. Koji typically grows on wheat and grains. So we're gonna add a little bit of rice flour to it and then add our koji spores and then add a little bit of salt because koji is salt tolerant and that's gonna help prevent the other bacteria from growing. Days. Mold spores are constantly in the air. You're actually breathing them in right now. So the problem with intentionally growing mold is that your little main character molds are trying to fight for their lives against every single mold in the air that's trying to f you up. So one mistake could be the difference between you enjoying a meal with mold on it and the mold enjoying you. Yeah, the FDA only recommends food being left out for about two hours and we're gonna do this for two days, which helps the mold grow, but also is part of the problem. There we go. There are two packs of completely white mold. The koji definitely looks different from the tempeh. Let's, oh, that's weird. Tempeh doesn't smell like anything. Oh, whoa. The texture on this feels like you're touching the stem of a mushroom. That's pretty odd. Actually, if you look into this thing real close, there's little beads of water on top of the mold and it's not taking in any water at all. That's pretty freaking cool. This looked like the plainest batch of soybeans. You couldn't even tell that there was mold on this before. And now it looks like this. Now the koji looks oh so familiar. I've never done it on straight soybeans before. 
And this is definitely a puck of fuzzy, fuzzy koji. The koji looks crazy because it has little hairs on it and it definitely smells like koji. Koji has like this distinct kind of like floral-y, almost like fresh laundry smell. I guess we just gotta cut into these and try them. I've done a lot of mold videos by now, on meat, potatoes, even a cheeseburger. And every time I look back at the first one, I remember how insane it felt. I was scared, I had no idea how it would turn out. And I still make a lot of incredibly cursed things. But my relationship with them now is different. I realized that the more times you step into the unknown, things don't get any more certain. You just stop needing them to be. All right, it's not that serious. We're just growing mold on food here. I've never had tempeh before, so. Hmm. Hmm. That's kind of good. It has like this really nutty aroma to it. Soybeans are kind of like softened up, but it feels like I'm biting into a roasted peanut. Maybe because I didn't cook the soybean enough. I'm not really sure, but I kind of like it. Not a lot of sweetness. It tastes like roasted nuts in hash brown form which is kind of weird, but that's the best way to describe it. No like mushroomy flavors on it at all. Mostly nutty. That does not taste like meat. All right, let's try the Koji version. Huh, that is Koji. Same texture, a little bit sweeter because Koji has like more amylase that breaks down starches into sugars. It has this aroma that's kind of unique to it. I'm not even mad, this tastes pretty good. This tastes cheesy and more like an aged meat. Like if you ever had the pellicle of a dry aged meat, that's kind of what it tastes like. That's pretty crazy. I'd have to say the Koji one is way meatier than the tempeh one. Tempeh one just tastes like roasted nuts. I wouldn't say it's like exactly like the profile of like a meaty piece of steak. Maybe if I cooked it in beef fat, that would change things. But the flavor is kind of, kind of cool. Definitely not meat, but grew mold on some soybeans. Well, I'm gonna finish this. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.